buat semua. Sorry teacher, actually uh, you can get the hand out from the KPs. Okay, you have this explanation of CFR keys here in your hand out. Actually we didn't uh, print all the hand out for today, right? So we, uh, you can, you can uh, refer to your KPs, okay? Is it okay? Okay, teachers, place you on the slides uh, for the next slide. Okay, discuss with a partner. How can we use the CEFR? No need to discuss with our partner. We can discuss together. Uh, what do you think? How we can use CEFR in our uh, with our pupils in our learning process? Any ideas? Actually, teacher, CFR is involving our way or our method uh, in uh, te uh, on teaching our pupils. Actually, that is CFR, uh, which what I understood from that. Okay, the way, how we are going to, the way, the techniques, the method that we use to teach our pupils, that is CFR. As we used before, but we didn't document that before, right? How you are going to use CFR? Uh, to, to, to evaluate our student, to know either the student understood or not our lesson, how we are going to use CFR. For what? Actually, CFR use. Any ideas? Or oh, we share our ideas together. Okay. Next slide. Okay, that's all. Some of the uh, Reason, how you are, uh, sorry, some of the way, how can we use the CEFR? For evaluating language learning needs, for designing <laughs> courses, for developing syllabuses, de developing learning materials, and then informing test development, guiding assessment criteria development, Informing continuous or self-assessment, teacher training programs, and also describing language policies. And you can add another function of CEFR by yourself. Okay, so teachers, now you can see the level or oh, actually we is it uh, for us to use our uh, pupil band level we have six level in CFR as I said just now we have A1, A2 until C2 right ok for our primary school we only focus on A1 and A2 as you know, preschool also involved in our system, right, CFR. So they only have the target to achieve A1 for preschool. For primary school, A1 and A2. Okay? For our primary student, make sure by the end of the year, they have to achieve A2. Okay? Actually, our CFR for next year is very easy. 
if we refer to our sikit on board after this ya, Our curriculum framework Kita boleh tengok That is very easy actually ya? Compared to our sikit on board before Okay Okay, B1 and B2 Only for uh, Secondary Pupils Okay, secondary pupils only Okay, and C1 and C2 for Form C University and College student So, I will focus in on A1 and A2 Okay, maybe some of our pupils at school have the talented in English, right? Ah, so, yang tu uh, Yeah, talents, right? Yang tu adalah maybe they all will achieve B1 At the end by a basic, okay? Okay, so our focus A1 for words only Word level sahaja teacher Word level sahaja If the student can understand only some words In English They can They uh, Qualified to get A1 already Word only And then for A2 Sentence level That's all Okay A1 and A2 A1 focus on word And then A2 focus on sentences They manage to understand Some of words only Maybe the weak student, right? Okay They uh, already can get A1 lah Okay And then for the other student Who manage to form sentences They manage to get A2 We only have two level in our primary pupils Okay That's all Okay, clear Okay, that is the framework uh, Teachers, uh, you can print the handout And then you can refer from your KPs Okay, the description about The descriptors about all the level Okay, next Okay, now we are going to go How does it support learning and teaching Our learning journey Okay, next Okay Please teachers, can you see the uh, the pictures there on the slide? Another picture earlier? Okay, can you compare both slides just now? Which one you prefer? Which one that you prefer? For the first slide or for the second slide? Second, right? Must be second. So, sayang, CFR also? Uh, give uh, to us the view on second slide Very simple to implement actually Next year, okay? Okay So, uh, so you can see the first slide is very complicated way to achieve, right? To use uh, with our pupils But for the second slide, very easy to understand to identify, to study, right? We can see the straight way And then we also have the signpost there The arrow, so we know Which way, which method, which strategies That we can use for our student Based on our uh, student proficiency or level So that means CFR is quite easy to implement Because it's not so hard for us to cover for each skill okay, Compared to before Okay, so uh, Later, uh, you can refer to the skill of work To the curriculum framework Okay Okay, so next uh, You can see pupils do better If teacher and pupils Understand goals, you know what is goals, right? Our object, objective And outcome uh, so we the term for that is learning standard. Okay, the term of the term used in CFR for our objective is learning standard, and then understand how they are doing in relation to those learning standard. Okay, how how ataupun how uh, method we are going to use to the student to achieve the objective, the learning standard tadi. Okay. And then use this information to make decision about the best way, the best way to achieve that. 
Okay, now you can see uh, just the pictures. Very simple. From preschool, A1, also our primary uh, student, A1 also, they have to achieve A1 and A2, and then go to B1, B2, C1. So you can see the small pictures there, right? Uh, actually, that is very simple way to achieve to that level. Okay? Okay. Um, okay, teachers. Before that, I would like to explain about framework just now, our, about, about our levels. Okay. Uh, it has six level of framework, level of pens just now, right? It is a way of describing language performance. Okay. It covers four skills. As you know, we have four skills, right? Listening, speaking, reading, and writing, and the language elements. Okay? And then they are global descriptors, which describe language level in general. And skill specific descriptors, which allow us to develop learning standard for each level. Okay, so now we go to the slide back. How does how does it fit in today today teaching, and then why it is important? Can you please think about it, about that? So I think on it, eh? after this we are going to go through deeply about CFR. Okay? Nice. Okay, teachers. There is the, sem the template of our lesson planning. Okay? If you have the handout, you can see, you can refer handout to. So from the template, we can see some of the terms used in this lesson planning template. Some of the terms we use now and another terms too we didn't use now, right? We have to add for our next year lesson plan. Okay? So just go through. Okay, teachers, we have the first ter uh, item is subject. Subject, we already know, right? Our English. And then year of form. And then duration, our time. Okay, and then theme, topic. Focus skill. Can you see focus skill there? We have listening, speaking, reading, writing. L.A. Language. Art. No grammar. Content standard, learning standard, learning objective. Content standard we already have now, right? And then learning standard also, learning objective. Ada lagi kat situ learning objective. And then cross curricular elements. And then we have activities. Okay. Uh, that you notice, we are separated the activities into three stages, right? We have pre-lesson. Lesson development and also post, uh, post, sorry, post lesson. And the last one we have teachers' reflections. Any odd things there? Odd terms? Yes, right. Especially in our activities, right. We have to put pre lesson, lesson development and also post, a uh, post. Lesson. Okay, we are going to discuss about this letter, okay? That's only the template that you have to go through, okay?
we come already come into the summary okay about CFR in the Malaysian primary classroom context okay okay the CFR skills and discrete test identify performance areas and describe them in can do statement which appear in the curriculum framework okay teacher we are going to put our yearly plan curriculum frame, uh, framework cf okay the new term okay curriculum framework and then we have syllabus and then we have sow scheme of of work as content standard and learning standard yang kita refer ni lah But uh, For the good news All the All the uh, Standard The objective will be given To teachers year one And you and year two In our Curriculum framework Right The teachers only just to go through And pick the suitable skill and also the activities. Okay, content standard and learning standard. The objective based, as usual, based on our lesson, what we are going to achieve with our student, right? But the view about what we are going to do, uh, we can refer in our curriculum framework and also scheme of work already given to the teachers quite easy next year for teachers year one for all the teachers in year one and year two. okay okay they inform the syllabuses and scheme of work from this we can identify learning standard delivered via the textbook or supplementary lesson okay this allows both teachers and pupils to identify all the relevant skills including those that are problematic which pupils need to develop from a focus on this skill in realistic context and allows teachers and pupils to measure how well they are progressing okay that's all about the overview of CEFR Okay. Any question, teacher? Okay, clear what is CFR? What? Clear what? Okay. Nanti after this, we can have our explanation about the CFR deeply from our videos. Okay.
go into uh, how to recognize the developmental needs and challenges uh, to listening as skills within uh, our Malaysian context and also discuss about the development of listening skills according to people's age and CEFR and we are going to discuss the development of speaking skills according to people's age and also uh, aligned to CEFR. So, uh, Okay, uh, teachers, uh, please take your time to go. think about the following questions. So the first one, how much time do you dedicate to speaking or listening activities in your classroom? How do you encourage people to talk in your classroom? And question number three, what are the challenges for people when using these two skills? Uh, do you need to discuss among yourself or how about one to two minutes? Do you usually do speaking or listening activities? Yes, do you? So how much time do you dedicate your uh, to, uh, how much time do you dedicate to these two skills? One hour? All the time. <laughs> so, teachers, uh, for CFR, uh, we encourage pupil talk in our classroom. So, um, after this, uh, please do less teacher talk, do more pupil talk. This is what it, it, uh, CFR requires us to do. So, uh, we need to decentralize. So, that means we let our pupils talk a lot. Okay? Why, why, why do I say this? Because um, actually, we need a, a, a student-centered approach that focuses on people's uh, being able to use their knowledge of the language to communicate for real purposes. But we do not want to like correct uh, our people's mistakes on the spot. We gradually correct their errors and mistakes. Okay, we let them. How to say uh, build their confidence. So do not like discourage them when they try to talk. Okay? Uh, and of course we we have challenges when uh, people use these two skills, right? So uh, what are the challenges? Uh, they have language barrier, right? For our for our pupils, the first language for Malaysian pupils. Especially in um, Skola Kebangsaan, um, Malay is their first language, right? Bahasa Melayu, Bahasa Malaysia. No? Bahasa Melayu is called, right? Okay. So, but for us in SJKC, English is like the third language only for Chinese school. So we, we are facing more challenges than uh, SK. Okay? For, because for us, the first language is Mandarin. And then later, our pupils in SJK has have to learn uh, Bahasa Melayu. And then only we have uh, English as our third language. And for your information, um, in Chinese schools, we only have five teaching periods. For us teachers, we only have five teaching periods in a week. Okay, I don't know about uh, SK, Skolab, and Kermansan, how many teaching periods do you have for English? Ten. So we have two half. And then we are also using the same scheme of work, the same syllabus, the same textbook. So we are facing more challenges. Okay? So what I mean is we need to adapt and adopt. That's how we, we go through okay, these two skills. Okay, uh, teachers, if you have your pen out, Okay, uh, actually, uh, if your KPs have already uh, went for the last course, 
uh, on I think on 23rd October, I think 20, 28, right? Okay, uh, there are the there are descriptors for you to decide on the levels. Do you have now with you? If you have, you can refer to your, to your handout. If not, then maybe you can ask your kids to discuss with you. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Next, what are the demands and challenges for people when working with listening and speaking tasks? Just now, I already told you.
for increasing understanding and productive use of language. Balls? Anyone who do not agree? opportunity to help pupils notice language. True or false? It gives us the opportunity, right? Okay. Number seven, restructuring is when we use language from a listening task to create a speaking task. Restructuring. Because when we listen, we cannot get all the sentence. We only get the gist of it, the meaning, the key words in it, right? So we need to restructure what we are going to speak later. Correct, huh? Okay, true. Number eight, we can extend the theme or language of a listening text to incorporate pair work, pair work speaking practice. True? Okay, nine, drills and chants do not help pupils improve their accuracy. True or false? False, huh? We, because we drills our pupils all the time, right? We drill our pupils. Okay, and then number 10. Pictures can be used to integrate more creative and free speaking practice. True, okay? We need to use um, stimulus, right? So for uh, all of these, uh, the... Okay, uh, these are tasks suggested to build more uh, to build confidence. Uh, okay, it's more controlled. For the first one is dialogue builds with prompts. Okay, responding to prompts, guessing games, putting pictures in order to tell stories, explaining if something is true or false, describing pictures in pairs, board games with speaking elements. Okay, these are all uh, more controlled tasks. So, uh, control task will work more for all levels, but may, it may need adapting, okay, depending for uh, each level and age. So, these are only suggestions. You can adapt or adopt. Okay, uh, for tasks to focus on speaking fluency, okay, there are a few, only suggestions. Okay, role plays, group discussions and debates telling stories and experiences, making suppositions about photos and pictures, creating quizzes or questionnaires, asking or answering questions, problem solving, interviewing. Okay, uh, for these activities, it differ from, con from the control task, okay? Because for this, pupils will have less scaffolding. For role plays, do they need to memorize or sometimes do they need to improvise on the spot? For role plays. Sometimes they need to improvise, right? Okay? So for this they are they have freer they, they are freer, they have more freedom. Okay, uh, is there are more chance for them to work on fluency features. Okay? And then um, for this speaking fluency, it will often be followed by delayed error correction. Huh? Okay, it works for all levels, but teachers should decide which work best for our lower primary levels. Okay. Okay. Uh, task to focus on listening for understanding. True or false comprehension, identifying features, sequencing a story, prediction task, for acquisition of language, we need to use repetition and our voice tone, okay, and chance. Then we need to integrate drills to improve confidence. Okay, uh, one way of providing support huh, is through integrating control practice with drills. We need to integrate, okay. 
So uh, why are drills uh, important? Our classroom. In Malaysia classroom. Drills. Or what we say, uh, chants or drills. the pronunciation okay, in hearing and saying particular words and phrases okay? and for them to get their tongues around difficult sounds for them to imitate okay, intonation so teachers have to be the role model uh, when, doing, uh, do, when doing the drills okay, and the chants repetition right? Okay, uh, the key points for successful speaking and listening activities. So you need to ask yourself, um, your when you do listening and speaking activities, um, number one, uh, is it purposeful? Is it a real for a real communicative purpose? Okay, B, is it adaptable? Okay, is it more or less challenging? Is it uh, suitable to the to our pupils uh, regarding the content? Okay, C. Time, class, noise, class size and noise. Okay, and then D, is it productive? And then E, is it enjoyable? So these are the key points uh, you need to look or you need to consider when you are doing uh, listening and uh, speaking activities. Okay, uh, there, are, there will be two examples of uh, listening and speaking activity. For this example, okay, uh, you, this is an example of speaking activity. Uh, you can show this picture to your class, to your pupils, okay? And then you can ask the questions. Uh, for example, can you describe the picture? Who do you think they are? Okay? And who do you imagine to the photograph? How does the photograph make you feel? Uh, if you have your hand up with you, okay. For this activity, there are two different pictures uh, actually. If you if you can look at your hand out on page eleven, these uh, these two pictures are to be used for. Listening activity. So uh, you can give your pupils two two pupils. Pupil A will get the picture uh, above. Pupil B will get the picture below. So uh, you ask your pupils to sit back to back, okay? And then they take turns describing their picture. There are differences between the two pictures, right? So you ask them to describe their own picture to their partner and then you have to listen and remember how many differences are there okay right uh, that's all for uh, session three and then we go into session four For this session, developing reading and writing skills. Okay, this session uh, you will need to look at both skills on how uh, our classroom practice needs to align to the CFR and there are how many practical ways to do this. Okay, uh, teachers, look at the sentences on the slide. And take your time to fill in the blanks. Do I need to give you um, the keywords?
teaches these four words are for you to fill in gaps. Anyone done? Uh, can I ask any volunteer? Actually, I don't really like talking in front here. there's any group work that you need to do, actually you need to do uh, some group work, but then I cannot do it today. I'm going to do that today. So maybe uh, the KPs need to go into detail with you all after this, when you go back to the school for cascading later. Continue all the all the handouts, uh, and there are slides that I left out because I don't think I can do them with you. Right? You want me to read out the answer? There are only four gaps, teachers. Right. So the first one, a pupil's ability to read and write in any language is dependent on their age or level. Okay, once pupils have learned these skills in their own language, they will, uh, they will be able to transfer many of them to reading and writing in a foreign language. Okay, the third one. There are also factors in the foreign language they are learning that can help them to read or write in that language. Okay, such as the amount of vocabulary they already know, all the grammatical patterns they have learned. Actually, teachers, you know all these already, right? But you don't want to talk. Because I also don't like to talk, actually. Actually, I've been talking for this three, for the, uh, for the session three and four to your KPs already. Okay? And... Right, uh, which skills can primary pupils deal with? Okay? The, these skills are uh, involved the skills involved in the reading uh, actually include perceptual skills, memory, decoding skills, inference, predicting, imagination, rapid scanning, anaphoric and cataphoric referencing. Do you understand what is anaphoric and cataphoric referencing? You have done that uh, when you ask your pupils to read text, right? So anaphoric is the words you refer to the phrases before or after and the following. Back of the words. And the following. Take the following. 
Right. And the body is back. And the body is
objective is um, based on your post activity. That means another you you have to integrate two skills actually for each of your lesson plan. Okay, there will be uh, one main objective, main learning objective, and then another one is complementary objective. Okay, teachers, please remember this. There are two objectives. One is main learning objective, another one is complementary objective. There will be two objectives. Uh, objectives. Right, uh, what, what is pre-lesson? Pre-lesson. It's like set induction, right? Set induction. Okay, so for pre-lesson, why do you do this? Why do you need to have pre-lesson set induction? What is the purpose of doing pre-lesson? Pre yes, to attract pupils. To attract our pupils. Anything else? Do you need pre-lesson to control your class? Do you? Okay. Because you need to get their attention, right? And then to activate prior knowledge, right? For them to remember back the lessons that you have they have, they have learned during the previous lesson. Okay? And also to give pupils opportunity to say, to talk about what they know. Right? Okay, uh, how about lesson development? Is why you carry out your activities, your actual activities actually. Okay? And then for post lesson, what is the purpose of doing a post lesson? To sum up, yes. To check their yeah, under understanding. And maybe to challenge to challenge them further, right? To challenge them further. Okay? And to integrate the skills, the skills that I told you already just now. For CFR, it's not only one skill that we need to do for each lesson. There are actually two skills. There are actually two skills. Okay, one is the main skill, and another one is the complementary skill. Complementary skill we usually uh, do in the post lesson. We will do it in our post lesson. Okay? So when you focus on uh, the main skill, you need to remember it is during our lesson development. Okay, while we are carrying out our, les our lesson. Uh, this is also a handout that you need to do. Okay? Maybe later you will need to ask your KPs to carry out or go through with you with this handout. Right. Um, while working with text, imagine that you have uh, some advice to give to your uh, new teacher about ways to work with text. Okay, think of five tips that you will give the teacher. Discuss among yourself, I will give you around five minutes. What are the five tips that you give the new teacher? I think most of you uh, have already been te teaching for how many years? More than five years? Anyone only three months or four months? Because Alia here is only teaching for, has been only teaching for? Three months? Alia is has been only teaching for five months. So Alia is now uh, JU. So you see, uh, we actually did not ask for this. So you are you are senior than us actually, you are all more, how to say the word, all time. Right now, like you. See, pasta, pasta. So, 
teacher. So I have five tips that you will need your teacher. Like, Alia. So you need to consider, you will ask her to consider what? The first one? Use dictionary. Yes, that is one of the way. You need to ask Alia to consider about the text. How about the length of the text for our year one primary purpose? Now we cannot give them a very long text, right? Because a uh, very long text is actually it's not for our year six people or so actually. Okay? Right, the length, uh, the length of the text, and then we need to consider how about the choice of words? Ah, yes, we need to use simple vocabulary for our year one and year two papers also, right? Okay, how about the team, tema, the team, and also the content, the context. Is it suitable for our papers? Is it suitable in our Malaysian context? Right, if you see the, if you have looked through the Superminds textbook, it's more westernized, right? Okay? But actually teachers, we, we can teach them something new, but then we can also add in, okay, add in, add in our Malaysian context in it. Especially um, the part, there's a part where uh, it talks about the winter in, I think in, yes, okay, we do not have winter in Malaysia, but then we can teach them about that, about the kind of weather, okay. Then we can also tell them that in Malaysia we do not have the kind of weather, but in other countries we can add in the knowledge. Okay, actually it's quite good. It's not that it's not that um we how to say it's not that difficult actually. We we also we need to explain to them. That's all. The authenticity of the text also, right? And also the types of sentences. Okay, for lower primary pupils, we need to use simple sentences. Okay. Uh, the, for the next slide, actually these are the tips for working with text. Or oh, it's on the next slide actually. I just want you to think. Of it. Okay. But since I've been doing all the talking, so I will give you all the, uh, I will give you the tips that there are not on the slide. Okay. Right, uh, for your reflection, you can go through with this, you can ask your KPs for the slide when you, uh, when you go back to home school for your further training, okay? Okay, uh, this is for your own reflection. Okay, number one, if you do not know how to believe integrating reading and writing tasks, what can you do? Suggestion or should I give you a suggestion? Right. So if you do not know how to begin integrating reading and writing tasks, so I think this is what usually happens in our classroom, right? When we ask questions to our pupils, our pupils do not know how to answer. When they look at you blankly. So we have to give the answer. Right. So number one, you can get your pupils to write name labels or labels for the furniture in our class and display examples of text on the walls. Okay, that's how you can integrate reading and writing tasks. Right. So the pupils already have already done with uh, writing, they write the name labels and then they also can read the uh, name labels, right? Can do that. Right, number two, 
Then should I give them the questions for a reading test? Is it before, after, or during? Questions for a reading test. Then should I give? Yes? It's up to you, teachers. There are no, there are no right or wrong answer. Okay? It's up to you. If, if you think you, your pupils can handle reading the text and then later giving them the questions, okay, you can do that. Okay? It's up to you, actually. Okay? You can also give them before they read so that they have a purpose, a reason to read the text. Yes, they will be alert. They will um, try to find the answers. Okay? So you can give them before they read. For them to read the questions first and then they read the text. And then you can also give them after. Okay, after so that you can check their understanding of the questions. Okay, number three. Can I ask my pupils to read aloud? Can? What if the what if the people say you don't know how to read the word? If you don't know how to read the words, then what can you do? So, then you correct them in the word. But uh, it's also better if you do if you as teachers do it first, okay? So that they can hear the written text, okay? Then you will be a good model for pronunciation. It's also good for you to do it in the first, and then later you correct the words. Right, number four. How can I help them? How can I help help them improve their writing? Writing writing tasks. Right. 
writing tasks about the team. Okay. Then number seven. How can I focus on communicative reading and writing? Thank you. 